Very good. We're almost all back here, but I think we can proceed. Thank you for, Gary, thank you for coming up a little bit earlier. The Harbor Master's budget for the forthcoming year. Why don't you proceed? Good morning. Um, basically, we haven't, we've uh, seen some minimal changes uh, in our budget. Uh, there was a line item change, obviously, for the salaries, uh, and I believe that is due to negotiations and uh, contracts that will be uh, potentially coming up. Um, we had a few line items that have gone up, and that is due to the uh, takeover of the new work building that we uh, have, which was previously the school bus garage. Um, just operation of uh, the heat and electricity, things of that nature. Our building before was was significantly smaller. So, um, let's see. We've had some reductions, um, nothing major. I, I don't have much anything else on it. Any questions, I guess. It's pretty much, uh, How much revenue does uh, this operation? It's um, going to raise about 168000 a year for the waterways account. Um, boat excise tax, we generate about 50000 around 78000 for shellfish. Um, beach stickers, dump stickers. Um, I want to say that we're around about 170000 for sticker sales. Um, the obviously you're aware of the parking program that we manage that um, Mr. Sullivan can discuss on uh, the items. So we do generate quite a bit of funds on a few levels. Um, we do operate a launch. I think the launch paid for itself this year. We did about 1,800 uh, trips, and that was combined mostly with mooring rentals. This year we've we've seen our mooring rentals uh, quadruple. To the point where we're actually seeing uh, all week long that the moorings are actually being rented now. Um, the launch service does come with a mooring rental, so they utilize it through the day. It keeps the numbers up too. Uh, it's a energy. It's a fuel efficient engine. It's a 90 horsepower. Uh, we probably burn 12 gallons a week. Where, where are these moorings? Uh, this is all in onset. We've uh, we, we we originally had five town moorings. We've increased it to 20 because the program that we received from uh, uh, Massport, where we were able to get these environmental uh, helix anchor mooring style systems, um, they allowed us to keep the, the ones that were not, that were going to be given up as well. So we, we gained um, 15 town moorings on top of it, and we're looking to uh, license them through the Corps of Engineers so we can actually rent them for a season rather than uh, carrying it on a couple days here and there. But, you know, average rental mooring, you're looking, I, obviously we're not in to compete with the marina, so we're probably going to be a little higher in price. Um, so we're probably looking four to $500 a month, basically, to uh, rent a mooring. So. It'd be great if you can find people who pay that. It, it, you'd be surprised. <laughs> It's a, it's a high demand. We probably have about, I would say, we've reduced it. Back when I first started, we probably had a few hundred people on the waiting list uh, for moorings. And we've, we've reduced that significantly through uh, just things that we've been able to, to obtain just for equipment-wise to be able to manage the mooring fields. We're running the biggest marina in town. You're, we've got 1,700 customers, basically. Um, and a lot of the stuff gets derelict and they leave things behind and, and a lot of people hoard moorings and now we have the ability where we go out and we actually clean out the mooring fields and, and, and try and free up space. So, And the new mooring systems are nice because it actually tightens up the mooring field a little bit with the new regulations. So uh, we have a little more room to be able to work with the space that we have. Now several years ago you were <clears throat> doing surveys of the mooring fields. We are, you could do a grid layout using the Helix. <coughs> we just actually, um, two days ago, we had a company come in that actually does um, all the software programs for um, mooring management. And uh, basically what it is, is, it's a program that manages your daily logs, your incidents, um, all of the um, mooring permits billing everything is done now it's web-based and we're looking to possibly go to this and what it does is when we put in our information to this new software program it comes up with a, a google 
map and it overlays our grid. So we're actually gonna wait on spending any money on the gridding because this program is much less money um, and we can actually make one in house because it, it'll actually make all the maps as we start uh, entering information into this program. So we're, we've got a couple other companies we're looking at but this one so far is by far the most thorough we've seen. But what's great about it is it's all web based so you wanna look at your mooring information, you can, you can go online, you can see all your information, your boat information. Uh, we'll have links available people can uh, tie into. This program is also uh, the only one that's accepted by the Mass Environmental Police, which is tied into their database. So when we look up somebody's boat, it'll actually give us that their registration's active, the whole shooting match. So now instead of buying monstrous computers for all the trucks, we can simply just use an iPad and uh, go around and check the moorings and change all the information. And, and uh, I think it's going to be huge for us. So, What's the cost? Um, it, it ranges between four to seven dollars per boat, and we would be removing all of the marinas annually. Yes, so we would be removing to save on that. We would be actually because we build the marinas um, bulk, we would pull the marinas out of all of the boats. So that would reduce us by 400 boats, and we would still be in-house billing, not through this program. So that would save us on the, uh, the 400 uh, permits that we mail out to the marinas and it's not going to be paid to this program. But the incident report alone, um, where basically we can just, right now, we, the, the guys in the office down the pier, you call them up, you let them know what the call is, just like you run in the police dispatch. Now we can just do it right from the vehicle, wherever we're at, um, and keep all of our information up to date. And it gives us statistics and, and uh, call counts and things like that. So I think it's a nice change. I'm, uh, I'm, Pretty confident this is. Uh, Marina's interested in coattailing with you on this. They they can't. This would be something different. This is uh, strictly just for municipal operations. Um, town of Plymouth has it. Town of Duxbury has it. Newport just purchased this program. Hingham has it. Those are pretty much the big ones. Uh, town of Marion is now looking at it with us as well as Mattapoisett. So. Looks like your staffing is staying pretty much the same as it has been. It, it is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We we're, uh, we might add one person with the the funding that we we've, we've uh, requested. So, um, and that's just basically to try and keep our evening operations down the pier open a lo little bit longer. Um, we're, you know, we're finding that it's, it's obviously the weekends are our primary, and it's gotten to the point now where we're we're staying open till 11 o'clock at night. I'd like to push it to midnight, one o'clock, somewhere in there, just because you still have a lot of people coming in and out now. So, I mean, not much change, but you, you, the last year was really a lot more active. We're starting to see it build up again. Um, it obviously it dropped when the fuel prices went crazy and the economy tanked, and and now we're starting to see people moving around again the gas prices are working with people and so <laughs> I, I'm hoping to see that we're gonna I, I we want to be as proactive as possible we want people coming in so I, uh, I I think it's huge that we do have some presence and that would just be seasonal staff it would, just for the 16 weeks that we hire them now your total budget increase is about 2% yes uh, over last year um, and you seem to be pretty active in not only in the in the moorings but also at the launch areas. Yes. Give us. Can you give us the status of the launch area in Onset? The it's it's actually the the only people that are holding us now up now is the uh, Bouchard Oil Spill trustees. Um, we've obtained the funds through CPC. We've got everything ready to go, and they this whole process with the 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 uh, the trustees of the of the um, Oil spill money have been very interesting, I guess, to uh, deal with. We've had we've had a lot of issues with them on on various levels. They they it got to the point where they were um, actually going to strip all of the shellfish money that the shellfish restoration money that was going to go to all the towns, and they were going to give it to a nonprofit, a single nonprofit that uh, was going to do three oyster projects throughout Buzzards Bay, and all the other towns were going to. Uh, basically suffer from it. It was a done deal and we were sitting in the meeting and uh, you know the, the trustees they were woed by them with their you know you know 
one foot thick pile of paper talking about their program and all the towns are sitting there asking about it. And finally, we were the only town that spoke up about it. And it got to the point where I'm writing a budget down in front of them going, you can still have all these towns do this. I, I mean, they were, they were proposing things in their budget, uh, this nonprofit to, to, uh, that were just obnoxious spending. And we, we were the only town that called them out on it right in front of DEP and everybody. And they actually made them go back to the drawing board. They've now uh, approved all three towns that were going to get substantial cuts in this money, and they've, they've now given it back to us. So we're, uh, Wareham fared pretty well with it. I applied for pretty much everything. Um, we received the $67,500 that we're waiting for for the onset boat ramp. Um, I had requested $30,000 for uh, Seed Oyster to keep our program going. They ended up giving us $35,000. Um, town of Marion requested $35,000. They were going to lose it, and town, town of Bourne requested sixty, I believe. But they've gone across the board and they've given all three towns now 35,000 plus money to build another shelf with Shopweller. Um, and we're also, we were actually, the, the, the nonprofit that we were fighting with actually chose Wareham as uh, their site now for their oyster project. So we're gonna actually have oyster reefs built in town. We're gonna try a uh, site off of Onset Island where we actually do uh, rows of shell. It's all subsurface stuff and we're gonna try and do a, a full oyster reef restoration there as well as a, uh, now they've accepted <coughs> us to do a scallop project. So somehow this is, I don't know how it worked out, but we ended up with all sorts of crazy things I found. <coughs> so. What happens to all these shellfish? When Primarily, I mean, the monies that are being uh, distributed now through this, this program are strictly for recreational shellfishing. It doesn't, it, they've already um, taken care of the commercial fishermen, they were all told turn in your paperwork, what you lost during the, the, the period that it was closed, and they paid out all the commercial fishermen that actually submitted paperwork saying they had a, finan a, you know, a significant hardship in, in that end of it. So this, all of this money goes back to the recreational fishing. However, they, the big selling point too is habitat restoration. You know, your, your filter feeders, your oysters, <laughs> your, water, your water quality stuff. So essentially right now, because our oysters are depleted. Uh, we're trying to rebuild that population just through natural catch, but we also purchase oysters and grow them. But the ones that we purchase are actually, I guess, genetically manipulated to be uh, disease resistant. Um, so when we grow them, there's a good chance that they're going to survive. The dermo is our primary issue. Overfishing obviously is the primary one, but uh, dermo is, is a disease that'll kill oysters just prior to the mature size where you can take them. So, um, so this stuff is resistant to that. So we're, you know, we're trying to, we're going to beef that up. Right now, we're doing between two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand a year. Um, we'd like to get around the million mark per year. Um, and with the coalition coming in with their their project in Onset, it looks like we're going to have a, a extra set of hands to really get us going with this this project. So we're going to do a, a site location in Onset where we can actually set up our oyster farm, basically. Um, and start growing this stuff out so we can transport it. But um, it, we're, there, we also applied for the EPA grant that just came out. We looked at, um, uh, we applied for 300,000 and it's a 400, uh, it's a four year project where we would actually grow out almost seven million oysters, but the, the grant also ties in a, a, um, a shellfish specialist that is actually, um, working for one of the colleges right now and he's looking to retire and the guy is a uh, oyster genius so I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping that we can pick him up through the grant where he actually will focus strictly on wareham on setting up oyster programs and start start targeting areas obviously we we Anik, we want to target wareham river we want to try and rebuild some and on it buttermilk bay is pretty good they, but that, I think that's going to be a site where we're going to look at doing like solar power, a solar powered upweller to grow stuff out just in that location and then bring them around to the bay in there. So it's, there's a lot on the plate for shellfish propagation coming down the road. So. Okay, going back to the, <clears throat> the onset boat ramp, what's the schedule for that? Sorry, straight off on that one. Um, right now we're just waiting on the trustees. So as soon as they, I'm going to have to say that we're going to have to wait till next fall because I can't, I can't go into the spring with, um, I can't go into the spring with them tearing this boat ramp out. We, we just can't do it. We can make patches and some repairs to it, but 
um, just to hold us over. So I'm hoping by November <laughs> we can get the RFP out and, and get a contractor in and, and start this project. But the longer they wait, the price goes up. So. <laughs> Um, we've gone back and forth uh, with our statement of work order, which is cut and dry. It's in the plans. It's, it's written right out, and the guy will send it back to me with changes to capital letters, and, and then he wants me to rewrite it again. So I feel like I'm in grade school, but fortunately, uh, this, is, this is how they operate. So hopefully we'll see something. I, I'm hoping in the next month or two, but... Time frame wise, we're gonna have to hold off. We can't we can't go out to bid until we have all the money. You don't, you don't get a haircut until it's in, Gary. Uh, I don't think you want that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, any other questions for Gary? Fun guy to work with. Well, he's been busy, been very active in town, which is great. It's a fun part of the job. I like this portion of the town is great. <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> you like being out on the water better that's that's where you really want to be <laughs> just there's just so many things that you can do i mean you, you actually feel like you're accomplishing things and in, in, in making stuff move i mean I, if we could just leave it better <laughs> when we when we're done with this place it's great I, got some big projects yeah there's some big up. ones coming down the road too the pier Johnson, is Johnson the pier, pier is going to be a, a a big big expense unfortunately um our docks at the pier, that's going to be another one that's, that's coming down the road, and that's going to be coming down the road as, as soon as next fall if, if, uh, once we're done. We've already had the surveys done and, and the um, inspection of the piers, and they, that last storm destroyed another finger, so we've got to break the whole thing down and try and lag it all back together, but we're just we're in tough shape down there. Now, can you go ahead with floating piers before you repair the structure itself. You can because it, the only thing that's attached to the pier is is the actual gangway. So everything else would be just pilings. Um, that would probably be factored into the the cost if they if they depending on how they rebuild the pier. There's a few different fashions they could they could actually a lot of times they just keep building out. So we would gain six feet all the way around because they have to put the coffer dams in and, and start driving new sheathing, and then they just basically leave everything there and build it out larger. Some of them don't do that. I, it, they've, they've offered us a few different options of uh, restoration to the pier, and they all have a big price tag of well, close to $4 million. So, Are there grants available for that? From all of the consultants that we've been talking with, no. Um, I, I think we would still do some fishing around um, to see if we could get anything, um, but this, we have to be creative coming down the road here soon. But unfortunately, they, you, they, you look at all these grants that are offered by all these organizations, and it's for surveys, it's for engineering, it's for this, it's for that. It's nothing towards the physical project, and it, it's, it's very discouraging when that's all we're shelling money out for. So at some point, they, they need to regroup and say, okay, well, we've spent all this money on these engineering <laughs> projects every single year, so now let's take all that money and put it towards the actual physical project. How so about federal funding? That's where we're going to try to look at. So but that is dried up as well. So, and then I believe in this next <coughs> proposal for budget cuts on the federal end of it, the Army Corps of Engineers took a significant reduction, which would be our source. Coast Guard's taking a pretty substantial hit. Um, the military services are just uh, under this, proposed, this new proposed budget. I was reading the other day that these organizations that we normally deal with are going to be cut pretty hard, so. Speaking of cuts, um, the buoy markers on the channel into Wareham. Uh, tell us what's happening with that. I don't see any any additional monies available in your budget. <laughs> no, um, they, they waited uh, too long. Um, they had come to us and they had given us options of doing seasonal markers on their, with their, under their running, which doesn't make any sense because now they're going in the spring and the fall to take these markers out and put them in. Um, but yet, these markers, they'll sit there for two years without any maintenance, and then they come in, they, they pull them, they make sure the chain's okay, and you know they, they paint them up and put some new reflective on it, which is significantly less than what they were proposing to us. And then we tried to work with them about, you know, we would if they would keep, you know, three of the markers, we would do the last two, and then they they never came back with anything on that <coughs> issue as well. And then they actually told somebody that we were gonna, we said yes, we were gonna cover all the markers when I don't know, it was just a. 
a, a, a cat and mouse game between us and the Coast Guard here. Um, and then finally, I got an uh, email saying we are coming in uh, February 28th and we will be removing all the markers uh, that we proposed. They, they left one. And um, so we we requested that, you know, we, we wanted to have another hearing regarding this and that they're putting people at risk because now they've waited so long to, to do these markers. And going into the spring, this is a, these are expensive markers and they're, they're making us responsible to mark a federal channel that's deteriorated. And our <laughs> argument is the, the last time it was dredged was in the late 50s. They, the channel is since filled in. I've spoken with the Army Corps of Engineers. They, they have come in and said, yes, we have almost 60,000 cubic yards of material that have, that's moved back into the channel. So now they want us to mark a neglected federal channel. Um, and I just can't, I can't see us putting that kind of, uh, putting the town at risk right now. We do enough markers. They have 500 markers they maintain in Buzzards Bay entirely, and we have about 100 we do just here. So they can pick up the other four here. There's one in Bourne that they're pulling out, which affects us also, and I, I've called Bourne, and they just, they, they just basically whatever. But I'm, we got too much going on trying to get things moving here. You got a big marina that's dumping a ton of money into an expansion now, and now you're taking all the nav aids away. So <laughs> if it came down to it and, and push came to shove and they said, it doesn't matter what we do, I, I, we would mark the channel. It's just, they, it's, it's theirs and we need to know that somewhere down the road they're gonna come in and start doing some maintenance to this area first. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a public safety issue and it's up to them. Well, to, it's definitely a public safety to, issue. Uh, it's to, a, to maintain that dense mooring field, restricted channel. It's it's a uh, it, it it's on a turn. It, it's not even a fair. It's not a straightaway. It's not a fairway. It's anything. It's it's you're zigzagging around. And the very last marker they're removing is an oyster bar that comes up at low tide. And we still have people hit it. But now it'll it'll just intensify. But anyway, that's we're we're gonna go next Thursday to the Coast Guard station, and uh, we're meeting with the the top the top dogs um, to go over this issue, but we've called everyone. We've called congressmen, we've called the senators, we've called their local reps, we've called everybody, and they. it looks like they've actually taken the steps to start talking to the Coast Guard of, as to why they're doing this. So we may have, we may have stopped them, I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Congressman Keating was in town this week for the uh, bus announcement, as was uh, Representative Susan William Gifford. And I heard her um, sort of taken by the elbow aside and start talking about it. And his office had already reached out, and I had another phone call from them yesterday. So that uh, we are getting good representation on this matter from our from our elected leaders. So good. That that's that would be a a real hit for the town, not to have those channels marked and properly marked. We yeah. have enough because they're not dredging them and they're not maintaining them, but. As and a that's a big that's a that's a big situation too. I mean, when you're even with us at low tide, if you if you're going to the more uh, westerly side of the channel outbound in in low tide, we're turning up sediment with outboard engines. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Mr. Zecco's got a 75 foot sport fish boat that comes in, uh, and you want a guy that's going to run a seven million dollar boat up the river uh, and turning up bottom. <laughs> He's going to go somewhere else. It's a, it's a big customer. You can't lose these people. And when you're making an investment like this, and it's not just them, it's, you know, it's Cape Cod ship building. It's, it's the Governor's Seaport Council that dumped the money into Bessie Park. It's the new docks that we put in. Uh, Tempest Knob boat ramp, they were all busy. Uh, and you know, you're just making them more difficult. So we, like I said, we wouldn't leave them hanging. Uh, it, you know, at some point we would, if, if there was nothing we could do, we would we would definitely mark it. But I'm coming in with Coast Guard approved markers. They're going to be the same exact size as the ones that they they took out. Um, I'm not going to play games with the federal channel. I'm going to do top notch stuff. So that cost? Uh, you're looking close to I want to say the figures I pulled were about 8,600 for four markers, and that's uh, <laughs> Coast Guard. Um, so it's not budget busting. It's not budget busting, but you know they're doing it as a cost savings measure, and then they're just it. They're taxpayers. They're using taxpayer money just like we are. So it, there's no savings. It's 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 going to hit us, and then we have to maintain them seasonally, where they leave them in year round. So 
And we've never had a problem with ice, um, people hitting these markers. There's, there's never been a call for assistance on any of the markers that they're, they're proposing to pull out. One of the ones, uh, we had one break free the other day, it wasn't even, it was in onset, you know, so. We've never, it, it, just, it just seems odd that they're targeting this one. It's us, the Taunton River, and one marker in Bourne. And it, that's it. It seems like Wareham, they, they just target Wareham and go, oh, you know, we could push Wareham over. We push pushes Wareham over. You know, it's, it, it's frustrating. So we're just pushing it back. I'm, What's the process to dredge it properly? Not the, 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 the we have, uh, I, Spoken with the Army Corps of Engineers, like I said earlier, um, the process would actually be um, we have to really show commercial use. Um, and when they look at it, they're looking at fishing ports, they're looking at deep draft vessels, things of that nature. We have to we have to be crafty about it and sell commercial operation, as in you know who's using the waterways um, and the recreational boaters that are using the commercial entities. I think is how we're going to have to play the game and word it to make it show that it is a busy waterway, <coughs> so um, it, it, it's gonna have to, we're gonna have to really play around with the, the wording when we send it to the Army Corps of Engineers. Which, which channel are we talking about? This is the Wareham River Channel coming in um, off of Parkwood Beach, and then it comes all the way to Zecco Marina. Mm -hmm. um, right now, that whole, it, it's, it, unfortunately, it's not good sand either, it's just silt and mud. Um, but that that channel actually originally was 250 feet wide because of the the sailing ships that used to be in here and things of that nature and obviously we're down to about 100 and then in some areas are probably down to 70 so just through sediment settling so <clears throat> hopefully they don't go back to 250 feet wide because in the past <laughs> 60 years moorings may have gone into Ooh, that in shallow there. area a little bit so we'd have to pull all of them out and relocate everybody but uh that'll be another process Right. Um, as I've been asking most people, uh, <clears throat> what do you see for risks on your budget? I feel very comfortable with the numbers that um, we sat down and worked on. I, I think that w I, we've we can live within our means on on this. I mean, obviously, there's the increase in, and that was put in for negotiations, and and uh, we do have you know two two different bargaining units in our area and that's coming up so uh, other than that we I think we're good I, I, our, we were able to addre uh, address it a couple of years ago where line items were really running in the red and we've been able to cut down on certain ones and, and put them into others fuel is a big expense just like everybody but I don't think we'll uh, the fuel prices now are you know helping us out substantially so you know your last Two years ago, to fill up a patrol boat was six hundred dollars. Now it's you know we're, we're dropping down substantially. So the marinas are under uh, under three dollars, where we were paying four. <laughs> so and your maintenance facility that's working out well. It is. We've uh, we've uh, finished fencing it in. We've uh, gutted everything. We've cleaned the mess out. We've repainted. We're in the middle of painting right now. Um, but it's we've been able to keep all of our repairs in house. We've stripped four power heads this year. We've replaced exhaust manifolds. We've done head gaskets. We've painted. We've redone fiberglass. Everything that we would have sent out to the marinas, we're doing in house now. So uh, it's it's worked out well. And you have how many full time employees? I have two full time deputies, uh, full time clerical and a part time clerical. And uh, we, I think we did three parking enforcement officers seasonally, and then the um, eight seasonal harbor masters. <coughs> Very good. Any questions? All right. I thank think you. We very have much. a very Sorry professional organization there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.